Good morning and welcome to the Daily Share where we pray the word of God and bring it to life in our lives. Luke 13 verse 24. Make every effort to enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. New living, work hard to enter the narrow door to God's kingdom for many will try to enter but will fail. Uh, English, strive to enter through the narrow door for many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. Berean uh, version, make every effort to enter through the narrow door for many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able. Um, the amplified version, which I couldn't quite screenshot onto this um, little picture here, is it, it says... It says the same thing, work hard to enter through the narrow door. And then in, and then it says many will try to enter. And then in brackets, it says through their works, um, but will fail. So we've all heard the expression, the straight and narrow. And I quite like that. The, the, the actual spelling of straight in this case is not straight as in uh, G-H-T. It's just straight. Uh, sorry, my I pronounce <laughs> the way I pronounce certain words. They are spelled different, but to me, they just pronounced the same and so it, in this case basically this word is used when you look check out this actual version of straight which is without the gh um it's it's um it it speaks it speaks about a narrow passage like a water passage um that links between two seas but it's a very narrow passage and i think i've seen we've seen the canals we've seen the sort of the small link little canals that link um, for example, I'm sure there's a canal in Egypt or something where uh, the cargo ships, as they arrive, they sort of have to go through a really, really narrow path. And a few months ago, that one of them, one got stuck. It kind of got diagonal across the canal. Um, so it, it kind of blocked a lot of other uh, cargo oil ships and whatever you, they couldn't get through. But it was a very, very narrow and I mean, when you think how big these tankers are, these um, cargo ships, and you think how big they are, they go through this re really narrow uh, sort of channel that kind of gets them to where they sort of, I suppose, uh, dock and, um, you know, release the, the goods they're transporting. Because obviously you're talking about intercontinental um, trade and travel here. Anyway, it's a very, very narrow um narrow passage right and clearly that that particular um vehicle or vessel at the time that got stuck if you if you google it you'll see where it got stuck and a lot of businesses were affected it, it must have been stuck for about five days if not more a lot of businesses were affected by that because they couldn't get through right um so it's quite it's it's quite um you, you have to be highly skilled to maneuver a vessel through that um channel I imagine and clearly you do because someone got stuck there for days and couldn't move um so that you need to imagine the kind of uh discipline it takes the kind of focus it takes the kind of um concentration it would take to navigate through that passage to get your vessel through that passage okay and uh, to me that makes such a, a it, it speaks exactly to the way we have to live life with God, right? It says, work hard to enter the narrow door to God's kingdom, for many will try to enter, but will fail. Where do I even begin with this? The, all the different things we've tried to do to, you know, get into the kingdom of God. We, we, we've tried all sorts to, to live in the kingdom of God on this earth requires a lot of discipline. Remember, Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. What does it say? Uh, um, and all these things shall be entered, shall, shall, all these things shall be added unto you. So your pursuit in life should be the kingdom of God. Now, if pursuing the kingdom of God is going to be a lifetime's pursuit, that, that's got to tell you how challenging it's got to be. You're never quite arrived. You're never, you never quite get to a point where you say, I've nailed it. I've nailed the kingdom of God. This is it. I'm in. Even Paul said he hasn't apprehended it yet. He, 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 he spoke about how he had to keep disciplining his body and beating his body down to, to in order to make sure that even while he's teaching people all this word of God, he doesn't get left behind. 
pursuing God, guys, it requires discipline, contrary to what we've been taught. Where, you know, we're taught, oh, just sow a seed or uh, attend this conference. It'll change your life. Attend, you know, pursuing God requires a lot of discipline. You know, we fake our way through life with each other as human beings. We fake our way through Uh, We fake our emotions for each other. We fake our love for each other. We fake our, you know, happiness for each other. But God sees through the heart. And this is why uh, that, you know, the the pursuit of God, when you pursue a relationship with God, it's not going to be as easy as the same relationship is or pursuing a relationship with with human beings. It's just never going to be because God sees straight through your heart. He's looking at your heart. He's not looking at all the performances all the um uh you know theatrics that we all pull and all the performances and it's so easy to get carried away when you're performing in front of people and to just be led by pride and to do so well and people look at you and think oh my gosh she's amazing how does she do this how does she stand in front of all these people and deliver such a speech that's easily done you can train yourself to do that you can't train yourself to really love and pursue God and worship him and honor him. No, you've got to be real with God. And God doesn't mess about. If your heart isn't real, he knows. He'll He'll give you signs to show you that he's not pleased with you. He'll give you signs to show you that's something you've requested. Perhaps you've tried to sort of fake your praise and worship for him in order to gain, gain something from him. You know, God will show you that now. You're not, you're not there yet. You know, that, that that's just the way God is. You, we can't fake our way through to God's heart we just can't do it we can't do it guys and this for me this is what the scripture speaks to the straight and narrow straight it says Jesus was telling even Jesus was saying make every effort to enter through the narrow door what's that effort you're going to have to just just study the word of God and do what it says simple plain and simple there's an amazing teacher I listen to quite a lot um I don't really make it a habit to to quote names, um, but he's called Kevin Ewing. If you look him up um, on on YouTube and he goes on, I quite like how he emphasizes about just follow the rules of God, just follow the word of God. And and for me, I suppose when I started listening to him, I found him refreshing because the things he teaches were the things I felt for a very long time while pursuing God in the church and doing all these uh, works and working hard and, 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 you know, trying to just, you know, give so much thinking that I was pursuing God and trying to show God just how much it means to me, giving my absolute all. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, the, the Bible makes it plain and simple. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. If you're looking for God, just look for Jesus. And if you're looking for Jesus, read his word because Jesus is the word. Read the word of God. There's no shortcuts. And unfortunately, you do find that people find studying and being disciplined in the things of God. Studying the word of God is really no different. In fact, I think it's even harder than pursuing any degree or any study, human study, any sort of, you know, human qualification you could ever pursue. There's no getting away with being half-hearted about it. There's just You just can't. You've got to be real and you've got to really seek God. I actually find that actually... We, we are taught to, in, 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 in the church, we are taught to, you know, oh, fear God. And our, our version of fearing God means just, you know, literally being scared of him and not being able to express what we feel. I find that the more real you are with God, the closer you are with him. When you cry to him, when you, if you're upset and you're annoyed and you're frustrated with him, tell him. The trouble is sometimes we try to vent our frustrations and our annoyances and our upsets. We try to sort of find other ways to... To, to, you know, to handle those or to, 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 to blow, blow off steam. The person you're feeling upset with is God. Get real with God. That's exactly what God wants, that relationship with you. You talking to him and not resorting to other means to get to him, right? Um, in Africa, we have sangomas. We have all sorts where people feel frustrated and feel that pursuing God it doesn't really yield and trust me pursuing God can be frustrating because you can pursue and pray and fast and read the word of God and sometimes feel like what is the point is am I even getting anywhere with this you are getting somewhere draw nearer to God and he will draw nearer to you his word he placed his word above his name 
And what does that mean? It means he values his word. He values when you commune with him via his word. He needs you to engage with his word. If you could engage with God's word, you'd see a dramatic shift in your life. Not through any other means that we are told to, 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 to pursue in, in churches. Just pursue the word of God. Yes, it takes discipline. And if you're struggling, if you find that it's just not, you know, studying the word of God doesn't quite lend itself to your personality or who you are. Well, you have to ask God because he created you, right? And you have to say, Father, I struggle with this. I struggle to even, you know, concentrate. I don't understand your word. I don't understand. Just explain it to me. He will explain it to you. He, he answers. He hears our prayers. He encourages you to, you know, engage with his word so why wouldn't he make it more plain to you he said um, in his word he said um, if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not in other words he wants to give you that wisdom to understand his word you just need to desire it but the point is seeking the kingdom of God and remember if you're going to say to yourself seek ye first the kingdom of God how are you going to seek the kingdom of God Trust me, if you're working hard at your church, think in that you are going to by serving, by cleaning all the cleaning, you know, cleaning the entire building and doing all sorts of actual physical works. That's not it. That that is good. That's humbling yourself. But that's not it. You're going to need to dive into the word of God and learn his precepts, learn his uh, learn his learn his ways of doing things and 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 ask him to teach you to do things his way. You're never quite done. I'm constantly pursuing that and sometimes I feel exhausted and fed up and feel like oh my gosh no matter how hard I try it's just am I ever ever going to get this but then you fall and you and you get up again and you try again that God wants it that way and the point being you are making an effort towards something that actually you make an effort towards Jesus Jesus is the way the truth and the life he is the way to the father so you want the father and his kingdom you uh attach yourself to Jesus just seek him through his word try to understand his word pray through his word make decisions through his word you know uh, just let the word of God be the center of your life basically thank you for listening God bless you have a lovely day goodbye